All right. Um, we are going to talk to Gohan in Texas because I am a sucker for punishment. Uh, Gohan is going to be calling in about the basis of morality and the origin thereof. And if Gohan brings up uh, reproductive rights, I am hanging up. Uh, so, Gohan, welcome to the show. How's it going? Uh, it's it's going. Uh, long time no talk. How have you been? Uh, pretty good, yeah. Um, how about you? Uh, hanging in there. Hanging in there. All right. Fair warning, Gohan. Um, I am very open to having the morality conversation with you, but I am going to want to stay away from any particular uh, the thing you normally call in about just because that's not where I want my headspace today, frankly. No, yeah, I, I talked to uh, the, to the call screeners. Um, that actually was what I was going to be calling in about first, but we decided to change subjects. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm more than happy to steer clear of it. Um, I think last time I called, uh, we had a discussion about uh, morality um and it went pretty well like i not that i did well but it was like a good discussion yeah and uh i think we ended with getting a little bit into like fine tuning but said we should try to call back and continue the discussion of morality so cool. that, that's kind of what i'm trying to do today awesome sounds good um let's figure out where we left off so do you want to give just a quick overview of kind of what we've talked about up until this point yeah, so um, as far as theism goes, we've talked about fine-tuning and morality. I've kind of uh, presented my argument for why I am a theist as um, an acronym called SHAPE. Uh, the letter A in SHAPE stands for Arguments for... Oh, that's right. I remember um, this. Reason and Logic. Uh -huh. uh, reason and Logic and uh, Arguments for Morality. So that's all including the letter A for shape. Uh, we also talked about S for science for fine-tuning. But I think today we're talking more about morality and the basis thereof. Cool. And why is that a big re reason I'm a theist? If you were able to uh, kind of change my mind on this today, there would be a much better chance that I would be an atheist today. Damn. Well, uh, all right. There are, there are the stakes, people. Um, I'm not super interested in changing your mind, but I am interested in seeing where your mind is at. So let's dive in. What do you think is the basis of morality? Um, so my uh, quick answer is uh, God. Okay. But um, if the main reason I think that is because I'm trying to assume the opposite where there is no God. And when I assume that, I see there's no possible way for morality to exist. When you so say as long as I see there's a possibility for morality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, go on. No, that's that's a good answer. Um so you're saying, okay, you're starting with this with this understanding of morality and the fact that it does exist leads you to believe that it has a cause which is God. Uh n not a hundred percent God, but it has to be something that's not a part of nature, so some type of supernatural cause. Okay, okay. Whether that's God or not. But, cool, cool. Yeah, I don't think any natural means can get us to morality. When you say morality, what are you referencing exactly? Because when people use that word, they can mean a whole bunch of different things. And I don't want to put a meaning on that and then yeah. argue around each other. No, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I would say not an absolute list of right and wrong. Sorry, not an objective, but an absolute list of right and wrong. Um, I know uh, I've heard uh, a couple people like uh, Cosmic Skeptic have arguments that you can still have objective morality even if it's not absolute. So I'm trying to stay away from the word ab absolute. Sorry, I'm getting my turn. <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from the word objective. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Okay. Whew. 
Um, that makes sense. And I appreciate that because, yeah, if you said objective, we would have to, you know, this is this is a skeptical call in show. We would have to go down the well, objective can be whatever we decide collectively it is brute. Um, but you're you're talking about something that is absolute. So something that is or feels like it has been handed down and there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it? Uh, not necessarily handed down, but yes, the if, there's no if, ands, or buts, just like there's no if, ands, or buts that two plus two is four. Okay. Like, that. that's true, absolutely. Well, absolutely in base 10, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from that. Uh, okay, so give me an example sure. of an absolute right. Um, uh, absolute right, I would say, uh, freedom of thought would be an absolute right. Freedom of thought. Okay, that's not, that's not, okay, I don't want to say not right as in like something that is granted by a government. I'm, I'm talking in terms of absolute good things and bad things to do or be. So can we can we make that more okay. within that realm? So like freedom of thought as in like the the right thing to do absolutely in X case would be what here? Okay, um, let's go ahead. Uh, I think I brought up this example before, but I'm going to try it again. Okay. Um, killing half of society with like a Thanos snap in order to have betterment for that society that lives. So, killing for the greater good. Killing for the greater good is an absolute right or an absolute wrong? Sorry, that would be an absolute wrong. Okay. So, I am very curious about what these absolute rights are because, to me, that feels like the more interesting area to go. But we can absolutely start with an absolute wrong. Um, Okay. Okay. An absolute wrong would be killing for the greater good. I like that. How would you define the crucifixion? Uh, I would define it as killing God. For the greater good? Um, yeah. Okay. Was that absolutely wrong then? Yes. Wait, the crucifixion was absolutely wrong morally? Yes. Wait, you're going to have to walk me through this one, man. Um, sure. Okay, sure. tell me how uh, this is an absolute wrong, if it's also... So okay, yeah. A part, a part of God's plan does not mean, like, God caused it. The people who crucified Jesus, you, whether they wanted him to die for the greater good or they want him to die for blasphemy, either way was wrong. Um, there, there's crucifying him was not a right yes it brought something good and yes it was great for us but it was not a right and most christians like we are very happy that uh we are saved but we wish that jesus would not have been crucified if that makes sense that is something that would have gotten you kicked out of my church uh for sure but um (laughs) let me wait let me let me clarify this for me no i i get i get that the idea that like the Romans and the 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 Pontius Pilate killed Jesus. They were wrong for doing that. Totally get it. Like that yeah. makes sense. But Jesus prayed to God in Gethsemane to the point where he was bleeding blood. He was like sweating blood, asking blood, to yeah. not have this to have this cup taken from him. He didn't want to do it, and then. The assumption that most Christians go with is that God said, no, you kind of have to. And he was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. God told him to be Um, killed for the greater good in that sense. So was that morally wrong? do um, Do you think God caused the crucifixion in any way when he did not take that cup from Jesus? I think it would be very difficult to argue that the plan was for God to come down and be crucified and that everything led up to that point in order to save society without also arguing that God had a hand in doing that. 
I mean, there, there's plenty of stories in the Bible where uh, God is like quickening the or hardening the hearts. That doesn't mean He made them choose it. He just it just means he let them reach their conclusions quicker. He didn't do any of that as far as the crucifixion goes. He didn't do anything to Judas to make Judas betray him. He didn't um, you do realize... anything to the Jews to make the Jews arrest him or the Romans to crucify him. So you realize that this is giving a lot of, like, like how how are you recti- like reconciling this with the idea that the crucifixion and Jesus' sacrifice was predicted, allegedly, in the Old Testament? Yeah. So, I mean, I can predict something bad will happen, but that doesn't mean I caused it, right? So you're saying that Jesus dying on the cross was not God's plan? I think God knew it was going to happen. Um, I don't think God caused it in any way. Um, but so it was a bad it thing. Was it was an absolute morally bad thing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Yes, I would say that was absolutely bad. Whoa, that's actually a really interesting thing. Okay, let's let's dive into this then. So, killing for the greater good is an absolute bad all the time, even in the case of Jesus' crucifixion. Cool. You're consistent. I like um, that. So the, the only, I, I do believe there is a good time to kill, but uh, it only comes when there's like in a self-defense kind of cause. It's not a, um, a reason to try gain something for the greater good. It's, you can only use it in self-defense, if that makes sense. Wait, but so yes, so as, continuing as as, to exist is not the greater good for you? Like, uh, no, so that's, that's not self-defense. Okay, like, all right, wait, I need to I, write I'm this not, down. I need to write all this down because I don't want to, I do not want to mess any of this up. So, killing in favor, in like service of the greater good is always wrong. I'm assuming you're also then anti-military. Uh, it depends if it's a self-defense type thing or if it's a, okay, let's take over this country so we can gain resources for our greater good. Like, that would be wrong if it's, I'm going to use my military to make sure uh, you don't attack me again. I think that's fine. Interesting. All right. So, killing in service of the greater good is an absolute evil. Killing in self-defense is not. So if Jesus right. had if Jesus had smitten the Roman soldiers who were trying right. to crucify his, crucify him if if Jesus had gone like boom you're dead to the Roman soldiers who were trying to crucify him that would be okay. Um, morally speaking, it would have been okay, but um, it would have been had another plan. He he had every yes he had every absolute right to defend himself. He just didn't. Wait, he had a plan. You mean he was killing and service of the greater good he allowed himself to be killed so killing yourself for the greater good is that good or bad i would say sacrificing yourself for the greater good is good um killing somebody else for the greater good is bad okay jesus sacrificed himself for the greater good all right this is this is a very complicated absolute law that we're getting into but i like the specificity yeah, this, this is our uh, this is our first uh absolute thing and we've been talking about it for like five minutes now. oh yeah oh yeah so okay this is this is okay so i've got a little asterisk so it's killing someone else in service of the greater good is absolute evil killing in self-defense is not now is that an absolute good or is that morally neutral for you uh what, uh, allowing yourself to die or killing yourself? Uh, sorry, killing in self-defense. Killing in self-defense. I would say that's a neutral. Okay. Um, unless if it's for yourself, I would say it's neutral. If it's for, if you're defending a loved one, I would say that's a good. Okay, okay. But, um, so, so far we're going through examples uh-huh. of what I believe is absolute right and wrong. But I still think we need to have the conversation of does an absolute right and wrong exist? Well, this this Would it is be absolutely wrong. Right. Well, that have any 
break any certain rule. Okay. So here's here's why I'm go- getting into this level of specificity here, Gohan. It's not absolute okay. evil. The reason is it's very easy to say killing is always wrong. And then the second we ask, okay, well, what about this situation? Then all of a sudden these asterisks come up. Oh, okay, well, killing somebody else is always wrong, except if it's in self-defense, then it's not, then it's morally neutral. In fact, if you're killing in self-defense, it's morally neutral, but if you're killing in defense of someone else, then it's morally good. It's also good morally to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. So dying for the greater good is not either absolutely bad or absolutely good, unless we specify what type of person is dying and what that greater good is. So the point I'm trying to make here is that it's very easy to say in broad strokes that there is this absolute level of right and wrong until we get into these granularities. And you've been very, very open about what you think these absolutes are, but you just said it yourself. This is what I think. Do you think that everybody agrees with you in in these these three things that killing someone else in service of oh, the greater good? Not. Okay, you do, you don't think they believe they all believe that? Definitely not. Okay, so how can it be an absolute morality if not everybody shares it? I mean, it can be absolutely true that two plus two equals four, even if I happen to think it equals five. Not everybody needs to share the same truth in order for that to be true. Does that make sense? Kind of. Um, But the concern there is that you can go to school and become educated and learn objectively that two plus two equals four. There are way too many cultures. There are way too many cultures and way too many individual experiences of this world and way too many religions for you to be able to objectively teach somebody a moral absolute, I would imagine. Unless you are willing to say that you uh, have yeah, the disagree, one way. No, yeah, I disagree. I think may, maybe not in my lifetime, but I think eventually, after enough discussions, everyone will come closer to discovering the truth, uh, whether it's for arithmetic or for morality. I think there is a truth out there for morality. I could be 100% wrong, but I mean, the fact if I'm wrong, that kind of shows there is a truth. But I think eventually we will be able to discover the truth, just like we discovered the laws of arithmetic. Why do you think that? Uh, because I do believe there's a absolute truth out there of right and wrong. I, when when uh, there, like, I think we can probably all, not actually, we won't all agree. But I know you would agree, uh, raping a child is wrong, mm-hmm. um, and that's absolutely true. There's no conditions you can put on that. Um, even if it did create a some messed up, hopeful, like hopefully never happens future, even if it did save the humanity, still raping that child would be wrong, even if it was for the greater good. So I think the fact that I, I don't see a way around that, I feel like that shows Here's... that there is morality, and that's absolutely true. You and realize that no natural you, the, you... law can get me there. Okay, but you do realize that the entirety of the Bible took place in a time where they basically sold girls off at the age of, like, 11 to be married to older men, and that was just considered marriage, and that was not even considered a thing that was even worth talking about. It was so normal in terms of morality. Like... That, uh, the the bop be one hundred percent immoral, and that still wouldn't change what I said as far as actual moral truth existing. Even if the Bible was one hundred percent immoral, it wouldn't change the fact that morality still exists. I mean, I agree. My assumption, though, was that you're getting your basis of morality from the Bible. Is that not accurate? No, okay. it's not accurate. Where are you getting your basis for morality, Gohan? more theology, which is separate from the Bible. I, d- I don't think you want to know what the theologians were doing, Gohan. Um, but uh, so no, I mean, you're, you're so saying that you have the, gathered... Theology, philosophy. Okay, you have gathered your conception of absolute morality from a bunch of various sources, which 
honestly is better than pulling it, you know, ad hoc from one source. So good for you. That said, that to me feels like a very unabsolute version of morality if what you're doing is going to various church fathers, various philosophers, various theologians, and kind of coming up with something that works for you. Not saying it doesn't work for you. It might be your absolute morality, but that doesn't seem like a good way to get to ultimate reality or ultimate morality, right? Unless you think you're being Again, guided my, by my something. Rules, uh, my rules of morality are irrelevant. The point of the conversation is to dis establish if there is actual morality that absolutely exists. Uh, not really. Um, so it is. Even, it is valuable. I, Don't. No. It, it is. I one, mean, I could be one hundred percent wrong. I could be wrong that maybe the right thing to do is to kill for the greater good. Maybe I could be wrong with that, but still there would be a right and wrong. But if you don't... Whether I know it or not. Okay, but that is just a claim now, right? We got here, started, we started out with, there is an absolute right or wrong. I'm going to give you a list of what I think the absolute right or wrongs are, and now you're saying you don't even know if you're right. There's just an absolute right and wrong out there somewhere that you're, you hope you're like kind of aiming towards, but you might be completely off base. That's not a really good argument. Um, I never said, here's my list. You asked me for a list. And, um, I kind of wanted to steer away from what my personal list is. I kind of want to steer more towards how would you justify a list of right or wrong with natural law? So, um, like, the um, secular humanism tries to justify morality. It's more of an objective morality, but um, I don't think Secular humanism can in any way justify absolute morality. Neither do I. Okay. So then we would agree that through natural law, that absolute morality can't really be justified? Yeah, sure. Now, okay. Now so that, proof... that's, why, that's one reason why I'm a theist. But, but that's, that doesn't make sense. Do you understand why? You're right. Yes, my my belief of absolute morality is there. It's hard for me to justify it other than examples, but it is something I currently believe. Um, and I'm trying to see if I could become dissuaded of it, but I do currently believe there is absolute morality. And because of that, and because we both agree, natural secular humanism can't get me there. I can't be a secular humanist until I drop the belief of absolute morality or there's a way to justify absolute morality with natural law. And right now, I don't see either of those two happening. I am. I mean, I, I, I respect that that's where you're at. And I, I like that you're able to articulate like a thing that would actually impact your worldview. That's an important thing to understand about yourself. But I still am not clear on why you think there is an absolute morality at all if you, can, you are admitting that's that fair. you do not have access to it. I think that's a fair point to raise up. Um, uh, th my reason for believing absolute morality is not the best, but it is something I currently hold on to. Um, my my reason is just uh, a doubt of utilitarianism or uh, ultimate good. I don't believe that's any type of morality. And um, Again, that's still really just restating my stance. I don't have a good argument for why I believe in absolute morality. I just do. And I wish I could either become dissuaded of it or find a reason why absolute morality exists through natural law. Okay. Well, I would encourage you to pursue the, the, the former rather than the latter if you are indeed looking at kind of tapping into this and seeing if you can, in fact, defend it and have a good reason for believing it. Um, because we all have things that we believe for no good reason, but this feels like a very big one and something that I personally would really like to tackle if it were me. And I would also say utilitarianism yeah. is not the only other option. I would do more reading into moral philosophy in areas that are not the traditional, you know, like Kant and, and all of that, because there are other options between like cold utilitarianism and moral absolutism. In case, actually, they're not even 
contradictory. Like they could overlap, right? Like utilitarianism could technically be ultimate morality. We just don't know because it it's not, we don't have a grasp on it because it is so tenuous and nebulous. No, you're you're 100 percent right. It could be, but um, even if that was true, I would still have a disagreement with that set of morality. And Ooh. if that set of morality said it was good to rape a five year old in order to save humanity, I would still disagree with that being moral. I don't know where that comes from. I I just I, I can't sign on to that. Okay. Well, I would definitely dive into that some more because I think you're on the right track here. Uh, who do you suggest? Yeah. Do you suggest, I, I've, re, I've listened and read Harris. Um, is there is there anyone else you suggest? Um, yeah, I would stay away from Harris, honestly. He he has an agenda in, and it's not a philosophically, I don't want to say pure, but I would, I would dive into, what I would do is I would go to the Stanford, um, encyclopedia of philosophy online and just dive into their morality section and just click links follow where they lead because i found some really interesting things there um, that are done by philosophers who are coming at it from a purely philosophy standpoint as opposed to trying to debunk a religion or trying to influence society and there are more options available to you so that might be a good place to start you said stanford Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll check that out. Um, have you heard uh, Cosmic Skeptic's ideas as far as morality goes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he actually kind of, recorded uh, over here a little bit ago. Do you kind of agree with those? No. Uh, Cosmic Skeptic and I okay. disagree on a lot, actually. Um, but uh, I... That to me, that just backs up the, th the idea that morality is subjective um, <laughs> in terms of what feels right to us internally versus maybe what logically we might agree with. The fact that those are dissonant is the reason this is such an interesting conversation to have in the first place. Um, and I think we should embrace that dissonance and dive into it more deeply as opposed to be like, well, this is just what I believe and I guess this is what I'm stuck with. So, yeah, do some reading. Give a give us a call back. See what you think. All right. Stanford Encyclopedia. Got yep. it. Cool, cool. All right. Bye, Gohan. All right. Talk to you later. Thanks for the call. Bye. That was weirdly really nice. Turns out you can have nice conversations with people. That's awesome. Makes me happy.